Uh, my name is Mike Kuniawski. I am a, a user experience designer and, um, at PARC. And we are a research lab that focuses on bringing together a wide range of technologies uh, to create uh, novel products and novel experiences uh, for uh, commercial clients uh, around the world. Right now, there's a tendency to just attach everything to the, uh, to the internet and have that be kind of the value proposition of it. Like, oh, I've taken a pen and I've stuck it onto the internet. I've uh, uh, taken this fork and I've put it on the internet. Uh, I've uh, taken uh, this paving stone and I've put it on the internet. And to me, that's actually a very, very thin value proposition. I don't actually think that that's actually uh, provides a very interesting or valuable experience to people um, just to be able to connect to something. You know, this is why, from my perspective, like connected stoves that let you check whether your stove is on from Brazil uh, are not actually that exciting. Uh, to, uh, to me, the key value of connecting things to the internet is to make things more like the internet and less like things that, are, uh, that just happen to have this dangling thing uh, that connects to uh, a Wi-Fi router. And what that means is that means that uh, they uh, can really leverage the uh, data processing capabilities of the internet. Uh, because what happens is, is that uh, right now, uh, when you have a thing that is um, perhaps a very, very, uh, a, pro uh, a device that has very limited processing, but it can talk to the uh, internet, it can essentially leverage the processing that's out, uh, that's out there to essentially be um, equivalent to the most sophisticated, most powerful computer in the world. So essentially, every single device can then become a representative of the, uh, uh, of the uh, most complex, most powerful version uh, uh, of itself imaginable. And that, to me, is very interesting. Because uh, uh, then what essentially you're doing is that your connected pen now uh, is not about the pen being connected, but it's about the pen being part of, the, of an ecosystem of other devices that are all speaking uh, to the cloud. They're all speaking to a, a single service up in the cloud. And that, to me, is why you connect things to the internet. That was why you make the internet of things. So for me right now, everything is about designing the service first and then identifying the, uh, uh, identifying the um, uh, specific hardware products that will help that service be uh, you know, either more competitive or uh, more functional or uh, closer to the moment in somebody's life where the information that the service provides can help them make a decision. Uh, practically means, um, you know, let's look at the WeThings scale. The WeThings scale was not about being a scale. It was about uh, getting data into a health monitoring service that provided kind of long-term, uh, uh, wide-range analytics about your health that were um, that used your weight as an indicator for a number of other different things, um, a number of other different health factors. So the service was the health service that just happens to have had this one sensor that uh, allowed it to uh, very easily get a key data point into the service. Yeah, for me, as hard as it is to make hardware, I think that's the easy part. I think as hard as it is to make the physical stuff, the hard, uh, uh, the hard part is actually devising the service that uh, that that physical thing is part of, that that physical thing uh, um, communicates with, and where the real core value comes in. In many cases, it's kind of backwards, where it's looking for like it's the device that's looking for. So, uh, 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 for a solution, for uh, how can I use this device? 
I think that Nike did a reasonably good job, Nike and, and RGA did a reasonably good job with Nike Plus because they uh, essentially um, said uh, that the fuel band was actually not the only way that you're going to consume that service. The fuel band was just one of the ways that you could get data into that service. But originally, it actually started out with uh, you know, wearing a phone uh, uh, you know, and listening to uh, music on your, uh, uh, on your iPod. And that, to me, was actually more, more nuanced understanding. Uh, and, and I think that's why, one of the reasons why they could, um, and I don't know their strategy, but like why Nike could kind of get out of the wearables business. Like they got into it first, and they got out of it first. And they could get out of it without actually destroying the service, because they had built the service concept without the device. Well, I think the companies really want uh, to own all the different pieces of it. But I think just like the internet, like the Web 2.0 phenomenon was essentially when companies let go of a lot of control, and they allowed other people to uh, create services on top of the infrastructures that they had already built. And that allowed them to really fully explore what the capabilities of those infrastructures were. Um, and, uh, and I think those are the companies that are probably going to um, succeed, you know, the ones who allow you enough access to the data that they've collected elsewhere or to the analytics that they collected elsewhere so that you can make a product that is um, uh, synergistic with what, uh, uh, the other things that they have, um, but is not necessarily one that they had ever thought of. So I think that's going to be, um, uh, that's going to be interesting. I, you know, I think Apple's, you know, to some extent understands that. You know, they have their home kit, and they have their health kit, which, uh, uh, which are essentially just APIs. In the industrial space, what's happening is that the devices that already exist within a company's uh, ecosystem are becoming smarter. So rather than uh, buying a new device and sticking it in my home, what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of intelligence to a device that I already own. So for example, you know, this is just a, hypo a hypothetical example. Say you're a company that makes industrial washing machines that are rented out to a wide range of industrial laundries. Right now, you're uh, uh, potentially charging uh, for those based on you know, a monthly rental fee with you know, a maintenance contract or something like that. The minute that you add a little bit of telemetry to that, the, fund, the business model fundamentally changes. You add a little bit of electronics to every one of those washing machines, and your kind of physical network of things becomes a digital network of things. And that digital network can now send back telemetry. It can now send, uh, uh, to tell you when supplies are low. And it can, in fact, change the business model fundamentally so that you're no longer renting a thing by the month. You're renting it by the minute that it's running. And so uh, uh, essentially, that's the, the, uh, the big difference. Essentially, at some point, we're no longer going to be buying things, whether on a small level as uh, consumers or on a large level as uh, uh, commercial entities. But we are going to be uh, renting them, or we are going to be subscribing to them. And that that is going to become the, the, uh, uh, the big shift. Because there's, there's kind of value in both, uh, in both directions. There's value to me, because I only pay for what I need. And there's value to the manufacturer or the, uh, the, the agent, because they get a much higher uh, margin on kind of every usage of the device than they do by just selling it to me. And so I think that's the, big, that's the lens through which I, uh, I see this, uh, this world. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure to uh, talk to Internet of Things World. And uh, I'm looking forward to the event next summer.